hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So, by the title of this video, you should already know what's happening. So, basically, I got this book whenever this book came out because sprayed edges, the the cover was just stunning. I just wanted it because it was pretty. And yes, this the the pastely sprayed edges did hook me in. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, but also I really like this cover. Me thinking, sure, book two, book one shouldn't be that hard to find because it's not that. I mean, it's quite recent. It doesn't. It didn't come out like 20 years ago. It's quite recent. No. It was quite hard to find, especially since I didn't want this cover. I wanted the cover that matched this. So, after much, you know, searching, because since this is a hardback as well, I was like, well, I kind of want the hardback too. I don't want the paperback, because I, I believe the paperback is easily enough to find. Um, yeah. So, I finally managed to track it down, hopefully. Um, so, uh, I found it on eBay. And, I mean, there's loads of, ooh, what special, what box is it? I don't, oh, I don't remember. There's loads of, like, special editions of Six of Cranes. Um, and the dragon province for that matter as well, but I didn't want to pay two, three hundred pounds for it because I'm, I'm like, I, I mean, I want a pretty cover, but I don't want it that bad. I even considered selling my hardback version and just getting the paper bag of both of them. Um, probably would have been cheaper in the end, but yeah, so I found this cost me 32 pounds <sighs> this is for a used book by the way it's not even new it's used so you know will it be worth it so I, I just open it like so I haven't checked it out but let's let's do it together let's see if this book is worth 32 pounds um, They match. I could cry. They match. Alright, let's check this out then. So, okay, so it's a bit rough around here. Same as here. This book has definitely been read. Um, the dust jacket seems to be alright. Alright, let's check. Let's check the hardware. Ooh. It's definitely been read that, oh, yeah, it, the spine is cracked and this is, I, I wouldn't say this is very good quality. It's broken, dude, it's broken. Yeah, but it's fine. Um, the dust jacket will, will, uh, will hide that. Okay, let's. Well, it doesn't seem to be in, like, writing or spillage in it this is extra material we don't want that I mean it seems to be decent still I'm not sure it's worth 32 pounds but at least I have the matching set now and um, we can go about reading these books I love that I'm packing it in and I'm literally going to just take it back off to read it. Um, but yeah. I'm quite pleased. They match now. They match. I don't know what these are about. There's something about um, this girl does something. And uh, something about the brothers. It's princess in exile, a shape-shifting dragon, six enchanted cranes, and an unspeakable curse. It will take more than magic to find the way home. A dragon's kingdom, a star-crossed love, and a cursed pearl 
with the power to mend the world or break it. I actually like those summarizations on the back. I'm not going to read the blurb because I don't want to. Um, we shall, we shall get into these now. Finally! Finally! Yeah. Let, let's see if it's worth 32 pounds. You want, you want to know the worst part of the £32 is that I saw they've listed the exact same book, uh, same like quality standards, for £12. Yeah, should I just ask for £20 back? Yeah, why bother? But honestly, this is how they get you people. This is how they get you. <sighs> The book sellers, greedy bitches. Anyway, see you later. How did my camera go from 72% battery life to 54%? Have I not used it, just seen how much battery there was. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm gonna need a new battery soon and or a new camera. I prefer just the battery, but yeah. <sighs> right. I need to sort out that mess, honestly, because it just looks like a mess when I do sit down videos from this little sofa chair. It's a chair. So, I've now read these books. So, um, how to best explain them. So basically, we start off with six crimson cranes, um, which I've every time I've thought about it and like written it down or something about it, um, I've referred to it as six of crows. So I don't know what that's about. It's not even the same amount of numbers in the letters. It's just that it starts with six and has three words. I don't know. Um, anyway, so basically, six of cranes. Nope. <laughs> six crimson cranes. Jeez. See, I'm just doing it. Ah, oh, it's, it's getting worse. Where do I hold it? So let's let's hold it here. First off, it was not worth 32 pounds. Let's say that. Let's let's just put it out there. It was not worth 32 pounds. So Everyone who's like making a lot of money out of selling their used copies, shame on you. It's fine, it's fine. So, six crimson cranes, that took an effort. Basically, we, what is her name? Shiori. Basically, so both books have one perspective and we follow her throughout. So, Shiori, she is a princess. She is a princess. She has six older brothers. I'll get into that. Basically, in the beginning of the book, she finds out something that's maybe not the full truth. <laughs> Let's just put that, put that out there because, yeah. So, she finds out something and then, because she finds out this thing, she and her brothers get cursed. So, they get different curses. Her brothers get cursed into becoming cranes. So, they transform into cranes during uh, daylight hours. And then, during night, they will transform back into humans. We find this out later on in the story. I'm just putting it out there because we kind of lose track of them. For a bit um but it's it's there it's there they get transformed into cranes now shiori she gets a different kind of curse on her so what she gets she basically gets a bowl on top of her head now for most of the book i pictured her having quite a huge bowl like it was like almost like a huge sun hat but <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be just like a bowl fitted 
just around here now she can see through it so there's that for her but other people can't see her eyes they can basically just see her mouth but for some reason I kept picturing like a huge bowl like a bit of a sun hat situation I don't know why it was just the image I got anyway so she gets that and at the same time she gets cursed with uh so this bowl this bowl is stuck on her head she cannot get it up it cannot be damaged she tries to, there's a point where she says she's tried to get it off in different kind of ways so yeah you just let your imagine do the thing but basically the big curse of hers is that she gets it's that if she utters a single word, or even a sound it seems, uh, she, one of her brothers will die. So for each word she says, a brother will die. Harsh. And I just wanna put like, that is the basic gist of the whole thing. So her mission in this book is basically to unbreak the curse <laughs> I mean you figure you figure so there's one thing though which anytime it was mentioned in some way uh it was like she was whole so she'd do like painful things and she'd hold in the sounds that you make when you're in pain like you cut your finger you're gonna go ow or something or swear <laughs> But at least you're gonna make a sound and she's like not making a single sound and then I'm like Well, what if she has to sneeze or cough? It doesn't happen in the book, but think about it if all the like Grunts and noises that you unintentionally make if that is counting towards a word that would get her brother one of her brothers killed Then what if she sneezes? What if she coughs? Because that's technically a sound as well, so how does that work? Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that was like, oh, what if she snores in her sleep? I mean, that's unintentional. She cannot help making that noise. So basically, she should be able to, like, she cuts her finger, she should be able to make a sound. Uh, that was terrible. But she should be able to make some kind of grunting noise sound. You would think. But no, she cannot. So, <laughs> so she already, she basically goes through the whole book. She gets, it's like she's on a trial of sorts. So not only is she, like curse she's also sent away <laughs> far far away from her home and she basically has to make her way back home um which is not that easy so she quite early on she gets caught for trying to steal a boat and she gets put to work so she is a kitchen maid i suppose and there's one thing she can do she can do a fish soup for a princess that's pretty good so there's a whole bunch of things so she meets people along the way she gets uh, she basically travels a bit not a lot in this book but some bits and she gets to know people that she thought she knew but she hadn't actually met them before so it was she thought she knew who they were but they weren't there's a word for it i cannot think of it so yeah, she gets to know a lot of people along the way, she gets to know herself and basically <sighs> all, all things happen. The land that she hails from, Kiata, don't come for me, there's no magic there. Basically the magic has been gone for generations. Because a long time ago, magic people and dragons, they came together and locked all the... the, 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 the <laughs> uh, came together and locked all the demons in a cave, in a mountain, as you do. And basically that kind of... Uh, that means that all the magic has been gone from the land. But every so-and-so... 
uh, a blood sake, as it were, will come into play. Yeah. Uh, and this blood sake is basically what will unlock the demons from this cave. So that there's a lot to this story, but it's a long, continuous story. Um, I liked it. However, I would have liked if this book had been written more up. Like, it's young adult, yes, but had it been more towards new adult era, um, only because the text at some points feels too simplified, like you're talking down to someone who's not quite understanding. So at different times in the story, it felt a bit childish, which could have very easily been rectified with having different wording. Um, but I, I did like it. Definitely not worth £32, um, even though I love the cover and it matches with this one, even though just the one has spray judges. Anyway, so that was the first book. On to book number two, The Dragon Promise. So in this one, because... Um, a bit of a spoiler, but she does break the curse in book one. Yeah, so we get a finality to that. So if you just want to read book one, yes. However, this one was more my favourite. <laughs> this book basically has, I think I counted it as like, it could have been like three different books. However, those books would have been like 100 pages. So yeah, maybe not. I mean, C.S. Lewis did it well with Narnia and stuff, but we as readers nowadays, we want chunky books, don't we? I mean, not too chunky, but a decent sized book. I'm not a big fan of the, the these chunky books. <laughs> well, I am and I'm not because they take a long time to read, okay? They take so long to read. <laughs> anyway, so this one. How to best explain it? So she broke the curse in the first one, so she's able to speak in this one, and uh, her brothers aren't cranes anymore. Um, or are they? <laughs> like I said, it could have been like three different books. It's more like it's like smaller story arcs throughout the main plot of it all. So we go through a lot of adventures in this one. So we go, we go see the dragons. Yes. Go see the dragons. We we go to uh, lots of other places. We battle demons. Well, not we, but she and the other ones following her. <laughs> Curses here and there are pushed on people and broken. And there's a lot of things happening in this one. Also, the way this is written is what I would have wished for Six Crimson Cranes to have been written like. So the writing feels a bit more mature as it were, like the characters have evolved and stuff and have matured. I think like timeline wise we're only about a year in, a year and a half ish. So much happens in this book. I love how she's like pulled all these different plots together to make it a big hole because all of the different um, missions as it were they they make sense it's not like oh let's go do this thing because we want to see dragons or let's go do this thing because we want to see if we have magic or we can take down a demon or whatnot uh, everything makes sense but also <laughs> when one mission ends we're like oh was that it i haven't read a lot yet but i really liked it i really as a whole i really 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 enjoyed the whole premise of it um bits and pieces here and there could have been a bit tweaked but as a whole wonderful dragon magic thing have i made any sense whatsoever I think not. <laughs> yeah, so basically, don't pay £32 for just the one book. Basically, just get the regular paperback editions of the book. I'm joking, you can have whatever editions you want, but uh, definitely not worth all that money, uh, even though it's very pricey, and especially since that money doesn't actually go to the author, it goes to some other person's pocket. Yeah. 
Anyway, <clears throat> I'm happy I got it and it didn't cost £200, so there's that. And I really did enjoy it. Um, I'm actually curious to see more of Elizabeth Lim's books. Also, was it for this one? So there's, I think it's for this series that Her Radiant Curse, I think it's called, uh, is like a prequel to, which comes out or is coming out around this time. I don't know. It's, I think it's this year, in the autumn. Oh my god, I'm just confusing myself now. Okay, let's move on and say, um, read the book if you want. I really enjoyed it, mostly. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then, take care, bye-bye. That was actually terrible.